In this video, we're going to talk about section 5.4, dividing polynomials. This begins one of the most difficult parts of the college algebra course. So when we're talking about dividing polynomials, we're actually talking about rational functions. That is the ratio of two polynomials. And whenever you have fractions involved, you know it's going to be more difficult. The remaining sections out of this particular part of the course are going to be more difficult and take more time to do the homework. So you want to allow extra time in order to complete it on time. Let me share my screen with you and we'll go ahead and get started. So let's see um, what I have is shared with you now. And what we're looking at again is dividing polynomials. So let's go ahead and talk about what it means to divide a polynomial. Now, remember I said that what you have is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. We defined polynomials in a previous video. Remember that means that the coefficients have to be real, but that includes square root of two, cube root of negative 11. It includes E, it includes pi. Those are all real numbers. But the variables have to show up in the numerator with whole number exponents or have to be able to be written in the numerator with whole number exponents. That means x to the zero, which basically just gives you a constant term, or x to the first, x to the second, x to the third. That eliminates all radicals from the equation. It also eliminates having the variable added to another term in the denominator. That's not allowed. Right, so basically all our variables have to be able to be written in the numerator with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the exponents, so no negative exponents in the numerator. So what we're looking at is, first off, we need to introduce the terminology that we're going to be using. So if you see right here, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about uh, the dividend, the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder. These are the primary parts to dividing anything, whether it's a number or whether it's polynomials. Now, many of you did learn long division way back a long time ago in fourth grade, and you probably haven't used it much since. But unfortunately, you're going to have to use it now. So I'll review how to do long division. But basically what you have is something called the dividend being divided by something else, which is called the divisor. It is equal to the quotient, which would be the, like the whole number part when you do division of numbers, or it would be the expression where the degrees are um, greater than the degree of the divisor. So this would be in the quotient part plus some remainder that never got divided by the divisor. So in the other form of it, which is the long division form, the dividend, which is the thing from the numerator, goes underneath the long division symbol, and the divisor, which is the expression in the denominator, goes on the outside. The quotient is the part that gets written at the top, and after you do everything you can do and you can't go any further, the remainder is this part down here. Now, the remainder never got divided by the divisor. That's why it's over here like this. So what we want to do now is actually just take an example. All right, so I'm going to totally make something up completely. So um, let's take 631, and we're going to divide it into 1,459,632. Okay, so I have no idea what this is going to look like. So again, in fraction form, this would be equivalent to the 1,459,632 divided by 631. This is the dividend, and this is the divisor in the denominator, all right? So this is just to remind you of the steps of long division. Now, the steps that we're going to follow are going to be estimate, then we're going to multiply. Then we're going to subtract. And then we're going to bring down. And that would be bring down the next term. Or if you're like me and you tend to go crooked when you do long division, it's better to bring everything down every time because 
I kind of go off to the side instead of going straight down like they're supposed to. So these are our steps. So the first thing we do is estimate. And when I look at this 631, it's closer to 600. So I can think about 600. Now, 600, I'm going to go at least that number of digits. There's 1, 2, 3 to 145, but 631 won't go into 145. So I'm going to have to go to four digits. So I'm going to be looking basically at these first four digits, 1459, and I want to estimate how many times 600 will go into them. Now, it's really 631, but this is an estimate. So I'm going to look at this as about 1,400 and this about 600. So I'm estimating two times, all right? So I think it's going to go two times. So I'm going to line up the two right here over the nine, which is the last decimal place I used to find my estimate. And that is step one, estimate. Now, I could be wrong, in which case I'll have to erase and start over again. But this is my estimate the first time. The next step is going to be to multiply. So now we need to multiply what you see right here. So we're going to take the two and we're going to multiply it, not by 600, what I used to estimate, but by what's actually there, which is 631. So two times the one gives me a two, which I again line up underneath this nine that you see right here, right? And then I multiply two by three, which is going to give me six, and then two times six is 12. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to decide whether or not um, this is smaller than what's above it. If it's smaller than what's above it so that I can subtract, then I know my estimate is good. So the next thing I'm going to do is the next step, which is going to be step three, which is subtraction. So we've done the multiply. Now we subtract. So we're going to subtract this second multiplication factor from the dividend. So nine minus two gives me a seven. I can't subtract six from five, so I borrow from the four to make it three. 15 minus six is nine, and 13 minus 12 is one. Now I need to check and make sure that this is smaller. This 197 is smaller than 631. If it's not, if this is bigger than 631, then my estimate was too small and I need to pick something bigger, all right? So 197 is smaller than 631. So the next step is to bring down a term. Now you can bring down one term or you can bring the whole thing down. That's totally up to you. But what you have to bring down minimum is the next term, which in this case would be a six. Now, again, I said, I tend to go very crooked. So what I like to do is bring the whole thing down every time, but you don't have to, all right? So we'll try to keep it straight right here. So this is under the six, and then we repeat the steps that we've done before. So we're gonna repeat, and we're going to estimate how many times 631 goes into 1976. Now, I have no idea, but I'm going to estimate about three because this is about 1900. This is about 600, and 600 times three would be 1800. So I'm going to estimate three times. I put the three directly above the six because that was the last digit that got brought down. Now I do the multiply step again. So I estimate it again. Now I'm going to multiply again. So that will give me a three, three times three is nine, three times six is 18. Check to see if it's smaller than what's above it. Now this um, multiplication product is smaller than what is above it, so I know I can subtract. So that tells me that my estimate wasn't too large. If what is here, the product is larger than what's above it, then my estimation was too big, I need to go one smaller. So I'm going to do the next term, which is subtract, next step. Six minus three is three. Can't subtract um, nine from seven. So I borrow from the nine, and that gives me eight, and 18 minus 18 is zero. So I have 83. That is the subtract step, and then I'm going to bring down again. So the next thing I'm going to bring down is the next term. And you can see I'm starting to go crooked. I'm telling you, oops, wrong place. 
I'm telling you, I always tend to go crooked. I don't know what it is, but I tend to go crooked. All right, so now I've got the three and the three up here, which is where I'm gonna line up my quotient. And then I'm gonna repeat again. Now I've got about 800 down at the remainder level, but I've got 631 as the divisor. I know that will go into it at least one time. So I'm going to do my estimation step again, and I'm gonna estimate one time. Then I multiply, which gives me 631. And then I'm going to subtract. And now I'm going to have to scroll up a little bit. So when I subtract, I get a 202. Two. 202 is smaller than 631. So I know that my estimate um, was not too big. And I know it's also not too small, right? Because this is smaller than 631. And then I bring down again. So I've done the subtract. And now I'm going to bring down. This last two, you can see I tend to go crooked. I told you, I totally do. All right, so we've done the subtract and we brought down the next term, so we estimate again. So this is about 600 and this is about 2000. I'm gonna estimate three again, all right? And so the nice part is I've already done the multiplication. So you could just look up here and write down the number or you could go ahead and multiply it out again. And this is going to give you 1893, which you see we also had up here. And then we're going to subtract. So we've done our estimation, we multiplied, and now we're going to subtract. So I can't take uh, three out of two, so I have to borrow. So hopefully you remember all of this. And when I borrow, I get 12 minus three, which is nine. And then I've got one, but I can't take uh, nine out of one. So I'm going to borrow but I can't borrow from zero, so I borrow from 20, and I make that 19, and this becomes 11. And then 11 minus nine is two, and 19 minus 18 is one. All right, now I have brought down all the numbers that I have, so I don't have any more numbers to bring down, but I still have 129. 129 is smaller than 631, so that means my remainder is 129. Now, what does that actually mean? That means that this 1,459,632 divided by 631 is equal to 2,313 plus another 129 that never got divided by 631. And this is how we do long division. So again, the steps are estimate, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat over and over and over again. And we're gonna do this now with polynomials. All right, now there are times when nothing else will work but polynomial long division. So you do need to know the method. Now for dividing by something that has only x to the first, then there's another technique called synthetic division, which is usually faster and less work. Both methods will work if the divisor has degree one, that is x to the first. However, if the divisor is degree two or three or four, where you have x squared as the highest degree term or x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, then you must do long division. There's no other way to do it. Synthetic doesn't work. It only works when the highest power on x is one. All right, so looking at this one right here, we have, um, for example, x squared plus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 4. Now, when we look at that, we know that we can, in fact, um, oops, let me uh, shrink that down again. We know that when we are looking at this, we see that this divisor is x minus 4. Now, this is another way of writing polynomial long division. But it does mean that we have x squared plus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 4. Now, you probably learned to do this by factoring and canceling factors, but x minus 4 is not a factor of x squared plus 3x plus 2. So we're going to actually have to do either long division or synthetic, and I'll show you both. All right. Now, the problem itself is only asking for long division. But I want to kind of compare and contrast those two methods, so I'll show you both. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this 
So x minus four is the divisor, which goes outside, and the dividend is x squared plus three x plus two. Now there's one thing that's very important with both long division and synthetic division, and that is that in the dividend, you have a placeholder for every degree. So if the highest degree is two, you should have a place for x squared, a place for x to the first, and a place for the constant. What if you have a missing term? Well, then you fill it in with a zero plus zero x squared or plus zero x, something like that. You need the placeholder. It's sort of like a zero in the middle of a number. It's holding that position. So we may see some of those and we may not. If not, I'll make up one. So we have x minus four and we wanna divide it into this. So remember what our steps are again. So we're gonna estimate first. So when we estimate, how do we do it? Now remember how we did it up here with the number. Basically, I looked at this divisor and said, well, it's pretty close to 600. So I took like the highest place value, 600, and I looked at that and I put it into the highest place value over here, which is about 1400. So I was using just the highest things, not the whole thing. So what we wanna do here is we wanna estimate by taking the highest degree term divided by the highest degree term. So this is gonna be X squared divided by X, which reduces to X. So you always take the highest degree term in the dividend and divide by the highest degree term in the divisor. And that will give you your estimate. So my estimate is X. Now in polynomial long division, it really doesn't matter about the lining up because they're not place values. So it's not a huge deal where they line up. So you don't have to worry too much about that. But if you want to, you can put it over the X squared. So then we multiply that step two. So when we multiply, we multiply by the whole thing. Remember when we multiplied, we multiplied by 631, the whole thing that was there. So X times X, write them in descending order, X squared, X times negative four is negative four X. All right, so when I did this, I got a polynomial down here after the multiplication step. Now, you know the next step is subtract. So if we subtract, what does that mean? Well, there are a couple ways of dealing with it. Some students like to put a minus here and parentheses around that, and that works great. Now, the way that I tend to do it, I like things more explicit. I like to write things down. If it's all written down, then my brain doesn't have to try to remember not to forget something. So what I do is I go in here and I change the signs and I circle them because subtraction of a polynomial does exactly that, right? It changes the signs. And so then I would be ready to go ahead and subtract. So subtraction is just addition of the opposite. That's why that works. So either way, we have x squared minus x squared, which is a zero. And then we have three x plus four x, which is four x. Now, do I really need the zero plus at the front? No, I don't need it. I can drop it off. All right, so again, what we had was 3x minus a negative 4x, which is a plus 4x. Oops, and I <laughs> wrote 4x again. 3x plus 4x is 7x. All right, so now we've added these together. What's the next step in our long division process? That's bring down. Now you'll see that when I do polynomial long division, I bring down everything. Again, that's because I tend to go crooked. So you, in this case, we only have one thing to bring down, which is this plus two, and you bring down the sign with it. So you have a plus two. All right, now we wanna start over again. So when we start over again, we want to estimate again. And to estimate, we're again gonna take the highest degree term here and divide by the highest degree term here. So that's seven X divided by X. So this is our next estimate. So we have seven X divided by X, which gives us seven, and it's a positive seven. Now the sign is a part of the quotient. So we're gonna put a plus seven here, and that takes care of the estimate step. And then we're gonna multiply. Now, when we multiply, we're gonna multiply just the term seven, the one we just added, just like in 
long division with numbers, seven times X minus four, but put it in descending order. So seven times X is seven X. Make sure you line it up under the other X term. Seven times negative four is a negative 28, right? So you wanna line up your X's under your X's and your constants under your constants. That's why if we're missing a term, we have to have a whole. So we have a place to put that if we have that missing term in the product. And now that we've done the multiply step again, we're going to subtract. So again, you can either put parentheses around the whole thing, or you can change the signs on the inside and add. So 7x minus 7x will give us a 0. And 2 minus a negative 28 makes it plus 28, so we get a plus 30. Now again, how do we know that we have estimated correctly. This 30 has degree zero, right? It doesn't have an X at all. And that's smaller than this degree right here. So I can't divide it again because this is only degree zero and this is degree one. The only way I can do division is if the degree of what I'm trying to divide is higher or equal to the degree of the divisor. So once I get down to zero, I got to stop, which means that this 30 is my remainder. So this means that this is equal to X plus seven plus 30 that never got divided by X minus four, right? Now, how is this, I mean, what does this really mean? Well, what this means is if I took this expression that you see right here and I set it equal to this one, if I multiplied both sides by X minus four, I should get back to X squared plus three X plus two. Let me show you that real quick. So I have x squared plus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 4 equals the quotient x plus 7 plus the remainder divided by the divisor. All right, now let's suppose that I multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 4. That means that I'm going to have to multiply on the left and multiply on the right. On the left, I only have one term. Remember, pluses and minuses inside the fraction don't count. So x minus four will cancel with the x minus four on the left, and I will end up with just the numerator, x squared plus three x plus two. What about on the right? Well, I have x times x minus four. This is using the distributive property plus seven times X minus four. So again, I'm distributing over each term on the right side and there are three. Remember in the fraction that minus doesn't count because it's buried in the fraction. And so when I multiply these two terms together, the X minus fours cancel and I end up with plus 30. Now you may say, well, those don't look the same. They are the same, let's see. So I'm going to distribute this now, and I get x squared minus 4x, and then I'm going to distribute here. So I get plus 7x minus 28 plus 30. Combine like terms on the right-hand side, and I get x squared plus 3x plus 2, which is exactly what we had on the left side in the dividend. So again, this basically tells us that we've solved it correctly. Now, I said there's another way of doing this if the degree of the divisor is 1, and that is using synthetic division. So synthetic division does not use the factor and the x variable. Synthetic division uses the solution associated with the divisor and the coefficient of the dividend. So let me show you how that works. So we've got this expression right here. Let me see if I can copy that off. And I'm going to put it right down here. So let's separate our work so we don't get confused and I'll switch colors. All right, so there's this. All right, so what I'm gonna do for synthetic division, and again, it's sort of a shorthand way of doing division, but it only works for divisor degree one.
And what does that mean? That means the power on the variable and the denominator equals one, and that's the highest. If it's x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, you must do long division. There's no other way around it, all right? So now we have this one, we have divisor degree four, but this one uses the solution of the divisor. All right, so what does that mean? What's the solution of the divisor? Well, the factor of the divisor is x minus four. And the solution would be what I would get if I took x minus four and set it equal to zero, which would be x equal four. So the factor is x minus four and the solution is x equals four. Okay, now you may go, God, you're running out of room. I don't think you can put this in here. Let's see if I can. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the coefficients of the dividend in order of degree. So the highest degree is two, so I've got to have a, a second degree coefficient, a first degree coefficient, and a constant. So the coefficients, looking right up here, this right here, I'm going to have one x squared, so I put one. And then I've got plus three x, so that's positive three. And then I've got a plus two, so that's a two. Notice that if it's positive, I don't write the sign. If it was negative, I would. Now I'm going to draw a bar, which looks like an upside down division. So instead of going above it, it goes below it. And on the outside, again, I need something related to the divisor. But when you do synthetic division, you use the solution, not the factor. Long division uses the factor. Synthetic division uses the solution. So synthetic solution, maybe that'll help you remember it. So I'm going to put four out here. Basically, it's going to be the opposite of that. Now, what do I do? Well, it's weird, all right? I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to say it, except it's weird, and it works, and it always works for degree one, but it's basically doing long division, but without the variables, all right? But the steps are something that you have to memorize. There's really no other way around it. This, I generally try to teach so that you don't have to memorize a lot of stuff, but when you do need to memorize, I'll let you know. And this is something you need to memorize. So we're gonna draw a bar right here, and we're gonna drop this first number straight down. So this is gonna become a one, all right? And then we're gonna multiply diagonally so we're always going to multiply by the solution. So one times four is four. So I'm going to put the four right here. And then I'm going to add those together, right? So when I add those together, um, what I end up with is seven. And then I'm going to multiply diagonally. So four times seven is going to give me 28. And then I add coming down. All right, let's go over those steps again. The first digit drops through. Then you multiply the digit on the bottom by the solution and write it in the middle. Then you add those down. Then you multiply that number by the solution, put that in the middle and add down. Now, once you're done, the last number is the remainder. So we're gonna box this guy off like this. And then if this is degree two, which it is, this is really x squared x, and this is the constant, then because you divided by something with x to the first, your solution down here is going to be degree one. So this is going to be one x plus seven plus 30 divided by the factor x minus four, right? Now let's compare to what we got when we did long division. X plus seven, remainder 30. X plus seven, remainder 30. And you can see that this is way shorter, but again, it only works if the divisor is degree one. So we wanna make sure that we only do that if the divisor is degree one. Now I've spent a lot of time at the beginning. Let's go ahead now and let's um, work on the second problem. Okay, so the second problem, and I'm going to scoot this up a little bit, we have negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 4 divided by x minus 1. They want us to use long division. 
we'll do both methods. Okay, so first we'll do long division. Remember that this is the same thing as writing negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 4 divided by x minus 1. All right, so we're going to take the dividend and put it inside. Negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 4, making sure that it, since the highest degree is 2, that I have a 2, a 1, and a constant term. And then I'm going to draw the long division symbol over it and put the divisor x minus 1 factor on the outside. And then I'm going to run through my steps. Step one, estimate. OK, so the first time I'm estimating, I'm going to take the highest degree term, negative 3x squared, and divide by the highest degree term in the divisor, which is x, which gives me a negative 3. So this becomes a negative 3. And then I'm going to multiply. So negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 1 is a plus 3. Uh-oh. Big uh-oh. Um, how am I going to? Oh, I lost an x. That's right. So at first, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. I should have an x term. And these should be the same. If these are not identical, I know I've made a mistake, all right? So because these were not exactly the same, I knew I'd messed up somewhere. So I went back to my estimate and realized I'd forgotten the x. So this is negative 3x. So this becomes negative 3x squared. And now these two are identical. They're not. I've already messed up. And then I have negative 3x times negative 1, which is a plus 3x, and I'm going to line it up under the x term. Make sure you line up like terms under like terms. My next step is going to be to subtract. So you can do it either way. You can put a minus on the outside. So a negative 3x squared minus a negative makes this a plus, and so this becomes 0. You don't have to write the 0. The first one's always going to 0 out. If it doesn't, we've messed up. And then the next one is negative 2x minus 3x, which is going to be a negative 5x. And then we're going to bring down any remaining terms. And I tend to bring them all down. All right. So this is going to give me a plus 4. And then I repeat my steps. So I need to estimate again. So this time in my estimate, I'm going to um, write it in a different color. So the highest degree term is negative 5x, and I'm dividing by x, which would give me a negative 5. So this is going to be a negative 5. And again, in polynomial long division, it doesn't matter if you line it up too well. So this is going to give me negative 5x plus 5. And then I need to subtract. So I'm going to put a minus, and this time I'm going to write them because I find it easier if they're written and circled. If I circle it, I know which one to use um, because I don't always have colored pencils. So now I need to go ahead and subtract. So let me scroll up a little bit so I have space. So negative 5x plus 5x is 0. I don't have to write the 0. 4 minus 5 is a negative 1. Negative 1 is a constant degree 0, which is a smaller degree than x. So this is my remainder of negative 1. So this means that my quotient is negative 3x minus 5. Now you're going to have to, oh, I lost my x again. We're going to have to check on web work and see whether it wants the remainder by the divisor or just the remainder. My guess is it's expecting a negative 1. But what it means, of course, up here is that this is equal to negative 3x minus 5. God, I keep forgetting that x. What is the deal today? That x just doesn't want to stay. Minus 1 divided by, never got divided by x minus 1. So this is what it means, right? Now let's go ahead and go through this problem again, but let's do it with... Um, Let's go ahead and do it with synthetic division. So in synthetic division, I start with the dividend. If the highest degree is 2, then I need something for the second power, the first power, and the constant term. If the highest degree is 3, I need 4. 
third power, second power, first power constant. And if one is missing, I put a zero in its place. So now I've got a negative three and they have to be in descending order, a negative two and a four. Allow plenty of room, come across. Now the factor is what we use in long division and it's X minus one. The solution is what we use in synthetic, solution synthetic, and that would be x equal one. Setting x minus one equal to zero and solving gives us um, x equal to one. So I'm gonna put the one right here. And then I draw another bar. The first number always drops through as is, so I get a negative three. Then I multiply diagonally, so I multiply these together and I put that in the next slot in the middle. Then I add down, so I get a negative five, and then I multiply diagonally, so I get a negative five, then I add down, so I get a negative one. I finish, so I box off the last one. This is x squared, so this is gonna be x. So this becomes negative three x minus five minus one, never got divided by x minus one, which is the same thing we got the first time. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. I'm looking for something slightly more challenging, but I'm not seeing any. All right, I want you this time to pause the video, work out the long division and the synthetic division, then turn the video back on and we'll compare our work. So how did you do? Hopefully you got through this one and you got the same solution that I got. You'll notice that you were getting the same number showing up in both synthetic division and long division. That's not accidental. That is how synthetic division works. It's mimicking the long division, but without including the variable. But again, it only works when the divisor is degree one. If the divisor is degree two, three, four, then we're stuck with long division. Okay, you may wanna pause the video and make sure that you can see everything, but again, um, as long as you've got the same answers that I've got, you're probably in good shape. Let's go ahead and move on now. And we're going to look at the next problem. Now, in problem number four, notice that this is degree three, which means that I need four terms or four numbers in synthetic division. The x cubed, the x squared, the x, and the constant, and they must be in order. So I'm going to go ahead and have you pause the video work this one out, then turn the video back on and we'll compare our answers. And again, try long division and synthetic division on this one as well. And then after that, we'll stick with whatever the directions say. So let's go through this one now. We've got the long division here on the left and the synthetic on the right. And you'll notice both answers match and we have the same numbers coming up here that we had over here when we did our um, process. Notice that my estimation had to be done three times and that's because I had X cubed. So three X cubed divided by X gives me a first estimate of three X squared. So then I multiply that by the X plus five and I get these terms. Change their signs in order to add the opposite, that's subtraction. And I end up with this 20, negative 20 X squared. I tend to go crooked. So I always bring down everything. So I brought down both the minus three X and the plus four. So technically you only have to bring down the next term. Then I estimate it again using the highest degree term here, which was the negative 20 X squared and dividing by X again to get negative 20 X. So that was my next estimate in the quotient. Then I multiply by X plus five to get the expression here in blue. Then I change the signs and add the opposite to subtract. And this gives me 97 X. Then I bring down the plus four. And again, this is degree one and this is degree one. So they're the same. So I keep going. I keep going until what the remainder is, is a degree less than the divisor. So I do it one more time and I take the highest degree term 97 X divide by X to get a positive 97. Now the sign, the plus sign is part of the quotient. And then I multiply 97 by X plus five to get the expression in blue. 
change the signs and add the opposite to subtract, and I get negative 481. Over here in the synthetic division, notice that the factor is x plus 5. That's the divisor. And if I set that to 0 and solve, I get x equal negative 5. So in synthetic division, I use the solution negative 5. And I use the coefficients of the dividend in descending order. 3, negative 5, negative 3, 4. 3, negative 5, negative 3, 4. That's coming from right here. And then again, the first number drops through, multiply diagonally, and write it in the next diagonal to the right in the middle. Add straight down. Then multiply diagonally. These two together give me 100. Add straight down. Then multiply diagonally, put it diagonally to the right, add straight down. The last number is the remainder, and these are going to be one degree less in order. So this will be an x squared, an x, and this will be a constant. If one of these is a zero, then that particular term is a zero. So this gives us the same solution. Let's now move on to our next problem, which is problem number five. Again, this is a cubic divided by a linear factor, x plus 2, x to the first. This time, we're just going to do synthetic division. So let's go ahead and work this one together just for fun. I won't make you pause the video. So my factor is x plus 2. So what would the solution be? Again, take x plus 2, set it equal to 0, and solve. So my solution is going to be x equal negative 2. So I use a negative 2, and then I put the coefficients of the dividend in descending order. So I start with this 2, and then this 2 becomes the next one, and this 2 becomes the third one, and this 2, the constant, becomes the fourth one. So this is really kind of long, so I don't need to go that far over. I do recommend that you spread them out in case you end up with triple digits like we did on the last one. If you crowd it up too much, it's easy to make a careless mistake. Draw another horizontal bar. First number drops through, so I get a 2. Multiply diagonally to the left, so I get a negative 4, which I write diagonally to the right. Add down. Then multiply diagonally to the left, and we're going to put it diagonally to the right. So this gives me a positive 4, then I add down, I get a 6. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. Add down, I get a negative 10. Box off the last number, that's the remainder. This was x cubed, so this starts with x squared, then x, then a constant. So this becomes 2x squared minus 2x plus 6 minus 10 that never got divided by x plus 2. All right, let's move on to our next problem. You can see synthetic is so much easier. This one is actually interesting, and I'll do it in both um, methods. I'll use long division and synthetic, so you can see what um, they both look like. Notice that this one is third degree, but it is missing the x squared term. So we're going to have to fill that in with a 0x squared. So for long division, the divisor is x plus 5. And the dividend is 4x cubed plus 0x squared plus 3x plus 5. Notice that you fill in that 0. Now the factor, of course, is x plus 5, which means that the solution is going to be x equal negative 5. So when we set up synthetic division, we're going to have negative 5 on the outside. Now, what would our numbers be from the dividend? They must be in descending order. And if there's a missing term, you have to fill it in with a 0. So this is a 4, then a 0, then a 3, then a 5. Right? And notice that these match the ones from long division that you see over here on the left. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to estimate. So I'm going to estimate 4x cubed divided by x, which is going to give me 4x squared. So I can put that up here in the quotient, and then I'm going to multiply. 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. If 
the first ones aren't identical, I've made a mistake somewhere. Then I multiply 4x squared times 5, which is 20x squared. And now you can see why I needed that hole filled in for the missing term, because I got an x squared term, which can't add to an x term, they're not alike. And then I'm going to subtract by changing the signs and adding. So this becomes a minus, and this becomes a minus. And now when I add the opposite, that's subtraction. So the first one should always cancel. And then I got 0x squared minus 20x squared, which is a negative 20x squared. And then I'm going to bring down. And this time I'll try to go straight, so I'll keep bring down just the 1. Then I estimate again. So I have negative 20x squared, highest degree term, divided by the highest degree term in the divisor, which gives me negative 20x, right? So my next estimate is negative 20x, and it goes in the quotient. Then we multiply. So this should give me negative 20x squared, should be identical. Negative 20x times 5 is a negative 100x. And you can see I'm kind of going sideways again. And then we're going to change the signs to subtract, and we're going to add the opposite. So this goes to a plus, and this also goes to a plus. So this is going to cancel the first term, and then this gives me 103x. And then I'm going to bring down, it's kind of crooked, but I'm going to bring down the 5. And again, this is why I tend to bring down everything each time in the polynomial long division. Now I need to estimate again. So I have 103x. Sorry about that. My dog's going to bark for a little bit. 103x divided by x, which gives us a positive 103. So remember to include the plus sign as part of the quotient. Now we multiply. So we get 103x. And 103 times 5 would be 515. Then we subtract, which means change the signs and add the opposite. So we're going to end up with the first term canceling, and this will give me negative 510. So this is my remainder. All right, now we can go ahead and complete the synthetic division. First number always drops through, then we multiply diagonally. So we get a negative 20, which we write diagonally to the right, add down, we get negative 20, multiply by the solution to get 100, write it diagonally to the right, add down, we get 103, multiply it by the solution, we get negative 515, and I'm running out of room, add down, I get negative 510. Box off the last number as the remainder. And since this is x cubed, this has to be 4x squared minus 20x plus 103 minus the 510 that never got divided by x plus 5. Now, when they ask for the quotient, they're looking for the part without the remainder. So they're looking for this part right here. Okay. okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. That was one with a hole. And now we want to use synthetic division to determine whether or not this is a factor. Now, if it's a factor, that means it divides it completely and the remainder is zero. So let's write that down. X minus four is a factor if the remainder is zero. So basically, what we're doing is we're going to do exactly what we've done before with synthetic division, and we're going to check and see if it divides it evenly. Now, again, what they're talking about is they want to see if this comes out to have no remainder. So they're taking this cubic equation as the dividend, and they're dividing by the linear one. So our factor is x minus 4. And our solution is going to be x equal 4. So we're going to have 4 on the outside. And now we need to write the term, the coefficients of each term in descending order. So I have a negative 5 first. 
And then I have a plus 21, which is second. And then this is a plus X, but the coefficient, though not written, is understood to be there. It's a one. And I don't really need to write the positive signs. It's okay if you do, but you don't need to. So then you have a one. And then the last one, of course, is the constant term, which is a minus 20. Make sure if it's third degree that you've got four numbers, one, two, three, four. Third power, second power, first power, constant. Now we draw our other horizontal line and the first number drops through, so you get negative five. Multiply diagonally to the left to the solution, you get negative 20, add down is one, multiply by the solution, you get four, add down is five, five times four is 20, add down, I get zero. Box off the last one for the remainder. And the answer is yes, it divides it evenly. The remainder is zero, so this is zero. And the quotient is gonna be negative five X squared plus one X plus five. Right, so you can write that in up here. Negative five x squared plus x plus five. Now, what does that mean? Well, the remainder was zero. So what this means is that x minus four times negative five x squared plus x plus five, the quotient, will give me the dividend. Negative five x cubed plus 21 x squared plus x minus 20. And notice there's no remainder because zero divided by anything other than zero is zero. Okay, let's move on now to the next problem. We wanna check and see if x minus two is a factor of this cubic. So just to get you started, remember if the factor is x minus two, then the solution is going to be x equal to. So we're going to have two on the outside, and then we need the coefficients in descending order. So this is a cubic. So I start with the coefficient of x cubed, which is negative two, then the coefficient of x squared, which is seven, coefficient of x, which is negative 11, and we need a little more space, and then the constant term brings up the end, and that's 10. Draw your line, drop the first one through, multiply by the solution to get negative four, add down to get three, multiply by the solution to get six, add down to get negative five, multiply by the solution to get negative 10, add down I get zero. So this is the remainder. So the remainder is zero and my quotient is negative two X squared plus three X minus five. And again, that means X minus two times the quotient will give me the dividend. It is, yes, it is a factor. Let's move on to problem number nine, which is a little bit different than the ones we've been doing before. So this says, use the graph of the function below and the fact that x squared minus x plus three is a factor of the function. That means it divides it evenly with a remainder of zero to find the equation of the third degree polynomial of f of x with leading coefficient of one. All right, so what does that mean? Well, that means that x squared minus x plus three times something is equal to f of x. And we know that f of x starts with x cubed plus da, 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 da. We don't know what the other terms are, but we know the leading coefficient is a positive one. All right, so how are we gonna figure this out? Well, it is cubic because it kind of looks like this, right? We talked about that when we talked about power functions. So it's definitely cubic and it is, got a positive leading coefficient because it's generally uphill, right? Remember you read from the left to the right and this goes generally uphill. So it's positive leading coefficient. We could not tell from the graph that the leading coefficient is one. They had to tell us that. That's something that we could not have been able to tell from the graph. Notice that it has a solution or x-intercept or zero right there. 
In other words, it goes through the ordered pair negative one, zero. It's a solution. Oh, wait a minute. When we do synthetic division, we had solutions, and this is a solution. So we have x equal negative one, which means that the factor, you're going to move the negative one by adding one to both sides. The factor must have been x plus one equal to zero. Well, then that must mean that x plus one divides this polynomial evenly because it's a solution, right? It is an x-intercept or a zero. So this must mean that we have x squared minus x plus three, which they gave us, is a factor. And we also have the factor x plus one, and this has to be our f of x. So let's just multiply it out. Now, different students do it different ways. I tend to do a combination of vertical and horizontal multiplication. So I'm going to multiply the x squared by x and the x squared by one. So that gives me x cubed and x squared times one is a plus x squared. Then I'm going to distribute negative x times x and negative x times one. I know it's gonna get crazy with all these lines. So negative x times x is a negative x squared, which I'm gonna line up under the other x squared. And then negative x times one is gonna give me a minus x. Now, where would a x term go? Well, it would go next to the x squared. So I'm gonna put it right here. So I have a negative x. And then the last one is gonna be the three, and I need to distribute the three times the x and three times one. This is just distributive property. So three times X gives me a three X, but it doesn't, it's not a like term to X cubed and X squared. So I line it up under the other X term. And then I have three plus times positive one, and that's gonna give me a plus three, but I don't have any constants in what I've got right here. So I just move it off to the side. And then I'm gonna add straight down. X cubed is the only X cubed term I have. I have two X squared terms and they cancel. So it's missing, I don't have it. It's a zero X squared, which you could write zero X squared, but it's not necessary. And then I have minus X plus three X, which is a plus two X and then the plus three. So this becomes my solution, all right? This becomes the function that gives me this graph right here. So I get X cubed plus two X plus three. And if you wanted to, you could do either long division or synthetic division to see if it's divisible by x plus one. I wanna demonstrate for you, because we haven't done this yet, doing long division with a degree higher than one. We have not done this yet. So I'm going to take this function right here, x cubed plus two x plus three, and I'm gonna divide by the factor x squared minus x plus three. So I've got x squared minus x plus three going into, and remember I have to fill in the hole. So I have a zero x squared plus two x plus three. All right, make sure you fill in the hole. Now, could I do synthetic division? Absolutely not because x squared minus x plus three as a factor would not have one single solution. So I cannot do synthetic division with this one. I can only do long division. We're gonna estimate. So remember our estimate step involves taking the highest degree term in the dividend, x cubed, and dividing by the highest degree term in the divisor, which is x squared. And that gives me an x, so I've got x. Then I want to multiply. So this gives me x times x squared, which is x cubed. They're identical, so I know it did it right. x times negative x is negative x squared. You can see why I needed that placeholder, that zero x squared. x times three is plus three x. Now I'm gonna subtract by changing the signs. So this becomes a minus, this becomes a plus, this becomes a minus. Add the opposite to subtract. The first one should cancel always. If it doesn't, you messed up. Then I have zero x squared plus x squared, which is positive x squared. 
2x minus 3x is minus x. So I've done the subtract step. And then the next thing I need to do is bring down. So I bring down the only um, term I haven't used, which, oh no, yeah, is the three. All right, now I'm gonna check and I'm gonna look at the degree of the remainder and the degree of the divisor. They're the same, so I need to keep going. I stop when the degree of the remainder is smaller than the degree of the divisor. So this is like the number at the bottom is smaller than the divisor. Then you stop when you're dealing just with numbers. So I need to estimate again. So this time I take the x squared, the highest degree term in the remainder, divide by the highest degree term in the divisor, which is also x squared. So I get one. That becomes a plus one. Then I multiply. So I get x squared minus x plus three, and you can already see what's gonna happen when you subtract. These are identical. So when you subtract, you're going to get zero, which means that x plus one times x squared minus x plus three does equal x cubed plus two x plus three, and we've proved it. So I wanted to do this one because I wanted to demonstrate both long division with a divisor of degree two or higher, and also do another one with a whole. <clears throat> Let's take a look at number 10. In number 10, we're going to use synthetic division because the divisor is a linear term, x plus 2. So my factor is x plus 2. So the solution is going to be negative 2. All right. So once I have that, then I can go ahead and solve it. Now, one thing I want to bring up what if the divisor was something like 2x minus 3, what would the solution be? If this was the factor, then my solution would come from setting it equal to 0 and solving, which means that this would give me 3 halves for the solution. So don't always take the opposite of the constant term, because if the x term has a coefficient, then that has to come into it as well, right? So then I would use the three halves out here. But mine is negative two, so I have negative two. And then I need the coefficients of the dividend, the numerator, in descending order. And I've got to have one for all the powers. So the highest power is the third degree, so I start with a three. There's no x squared, so I start with a zero. There's no x term, so that's a zero. And then I have negative 19 for the constant. You've got to have an x cubed, an x squared, an x, and a constant term. Then I'm going to draw my line. The first one drops through, so I get a 3. Now I'm going to multiply diagonally to the left and write it diagonally to the right. So that gives me a negative 6. Add down, I get negative 6. Multiply by the solution, I get 12. Add down, I get 12. Multiply by the solution, I get negative 24. And add down, I get negative 43, I think. All right, check my arithmetic. OK, so this last part is the remainder. And this other part is the quotient. This was degree 3, so this becomes 3x squared minus 6x plus 12 for the quotient minus 43, which never got divided by x plus 2. So the quotient part is 3x squared minus 6x plus 12. And the remainder part is negative 43. All right. OK, let's take a look now at the next problem. I have two more left. This one is also cubic, and it also has a missing term. It's missing the x squared term. So this time, I want you to pause the video, work it out, and turn the video back on and compare our work. So if you've been keeping up and doing the problems along with me, then you're probably a pro at this now, and it probably didn't take you too long. So go ahead and compare your answer to mine. Hopefully, I didn't make any arithmetic mistakes. Um, and let's then move on to the last problem. 
All right, notice that this one had a hole that we had to fill in because it didn't have the x squared term. So our numbers were five, zero, five, and one. If you mess up and don't include the hole, your answer is going to be totally wrong. All right, so that hole must be there. You must fill it in with a zero. We have one more problem to do, which is an application problem. And it says, suppose the area of a rectangle is 12x cubed plus 36x squared plus 30x plus 12. And the length is 2x plus 4. What is the width of the rectangle? All right, well, what do we know about the area of a rectangle? Well, let's start there. So the area of a rectangle I know is length times width. And I know the length is 2x plus 4. So really it's saying 12x cubed plus 36x, oops, lost part of my 6, 36x squared plus 30x plus 12 has to equal some unknown, oh no, we do know the length. The length 2x plus 4 times some unknown width. We don't know the width. Okay, well, how can I find the width? Well, you know how to find the width. You need to divide by 2x plus 4. So if I divide both sides by 2x plus 4, I get the width isolated over here on the right side. And on the left, I know how I can do this. I can use long division or I can use synthetic division. Now, let's go ahead and go through this one. Notice that this time I have a coefficient attached here, which is not a problem in either long division or synthetic. Synthetic is faster because this is x to the first. So what I'm going to do is, um, first things first, I'm going to solve for the solution. So if the factor is 2x plus 4, then the solution has to come from setting 2x plus 4 equal to 0 and solving. So this gives me 2x equal negative 4 or x equals negative 2. So my solution is x equal negative 2. So I'm going to have to use that number in here. So this is going to give me negative 2, and I'm doing synthetic. And then I have to have the coefficients of the dividend in descending order. So I start with 12, that's attached to x cubed. And then I have a 36, that's attached to x squared. And then I have a 30, which is attached to x. And then the constant is always the last number, which is 12. Now I'm going to have the first number drop through, so I get 12, multiplied by the solution diagonally to the left, so I get negative 24, add down, oh boy, 12, multiply again, so I get negative 24, add down, so I get 6, multiply diagonally, I got negative 12, whoa, it goes evenly. Okay, well, that's good, because that's kind of what I was looking for, right? So what I've got then is the length, or the width, rather, the part I was missing, is going to be 12x squared plus 12x plus 6, right? And that's how you find the width. So I hope that this video will help you in your polynomial long division. We'll be using that in some of the later sections in this particular module. I hope you'll join me for the next video.